everyone, and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be starting to go into genetic mapping and specifically looking at the two point test cross, which looks at two different gene pairs together. So like we talked about in the previous videos. Uh, so in the last video, we talked about determining using the chi-square to determine if two genes are linked. So if we do determine they are linked, what now? We can actually figure out where they are on that particular chromosome or get a rough idea of where they are based on doing some crosses. So there's ways to do physical mapping today. And we'll talk about that in a few videos from now. But right now I wanna go into genetic mapping. And when I talk about genetic mapping, I like to talk a little bit about the history of it. So this is all based on recombination frequencies. And so if you forget how, what recombination frequencies are or how to calculate them, I'll put a video uh, as a little tag up here. And so go back, watch that for how to calculate recombination frequencies. I'll just be doing it quickly today in some examples. So genetic mapping, isn't a physical location. It's a rough idea of how far one gene is away from the other. So this was first developed by Thomas Hunt Morgan back in 1911, who worked with Drosophila or the fruit fly. So Thomas Hunt Morgan is pretty much known as the pioneer in the original basis of genetic mapping. So he was the main leader of the lab. Of course, he had this massive lab with a bunch of students. One of those students who ended up becoming, becoming in charge of everything was Alfred Studervant. So when you read about genetic mapping, you'll read about both Thomas Hunt Morgan and Alfred Studervant here. Again, all this began around 1911. So that's pretty long ago. Think about the early 1900s, people were starting to produce the original or the first genetic maps of where genes were located on chromosomes. So we'll go into how they did this throughout the rest of this video and within the next video when they do the three point test cross and we'll do lots of example problems with those. So I just wanted to make a note that this is different from physical mapping. So physical mapping, again, is the direct spot of where a gene is located, and so it's measured in base pairs. That's the exact nucleotide distance one gene is away from the other. So how's genetic mapping measured? So it's measured in things called map units. So one map unit is equal to one centimorgan. Wonder where the morgan came from. Um, so that's kind of just like named in honor of him. Uh, CM is not centimeter, it's a centimorgan. And this is conveniently equal to 1% recombination. So this is directly really. So if I tell you something has a recombination frequency of 10%, that's 10 map, map units. So that's really, really amazing that that equals each other. So kind of cool. Uh, so the best way to explain this is by looking at an example here. So if I tell you between, if we do a cross between gene A and gene B, so we do a typical test cross and we find out the recombination frequency is 0 0.05. 0 0.05 is equal to, remember, 5%. You multiply by 100 to get the percentage. So 5% is uh, five centimorgans or five map units. So kind of neat how that works. So let's look at uh, what we have here. And again, uh, so when I say gene pair, so this was a cross done with Drosophila where they compared these two genes. So they did one cross here comparing gene A, gene B, did another comp cross comparing gene A and gene C, and then another cross comparing gene B and gene C. So three different crosses of fruit flies. So it's a lot of data, a lot of work. So this is the two point test crosses looking at two genes. Next video goes into the three point test cross where you can actually do A, B, and C at the same time. So it gets a little bit more complicated. So it gets a separate video after this. So if we look between A and B, that's a recombination frequency of 5% or five map units. 0.15 is 15 map units and 0.10 is 10 map units. So now you can use this data to actually map out where they are on a chromosome. So you draw a chromosome as a line here. So let's start with, so gene A to B is the shortest distance between all of these. So you know they have to be next to each other. And then A to C is greater than B to C. So I know it has to go A, B, C. We'll talk about how it could be CBA though. So A to B is five map units. Then B to C is 10 map units. 
And then finally, A to C is 15 map units. Or if that data is not given, 5 plus 10 is 15. So if you're doing this you know, experiment and you already did A to B and B to C, you would hypothesize that A to C should be about 15. We'll talk about how that number could actually be different later um, coming up today. But here, so this is A, B, C, but this could be the other way around. So this could also be C, B, A. You don't know the direct order based off genetic mapping. Physical mapping, you can get the direct order. So that's where we can go into the limitations of genetic mapping. So you can only determine relative sequence. So such as ABC versus CBA. Each are equally likely, just as long as if you're given this as a problem, that you have the middle one correct. So you can figure out the middle one at least. Just the other, the flanking ones might be different. Now you can make this better if there are more genes around and you keep comparing more and more and more and give you a better idea of the actual relative sequence so say there was a a d over here so if then you compared c to d or b to d that would increase the chances of knowing the distance also you cannot distinguish between same or different chromosomes if the recombination frequency is 50 percent so remember they could be the same chromosome very far apart or they could be two different chromosomes Either situation would be a recombination frequency of 50%. So if it is 50%, you can't make that distingu distingu yeah. <laughs> distinguation. Uh, but uh, what you can state from this is that they are in, are in different linkage groups. So you could make the statement, okay, you know, A and D are in different linkage groups, but you cannot say they are in the same chromosome or two different ones just 50 percent you can't be positive okay so now there's this thing called double crossover so these can underestimate the true difference so double crossover let's draw this out here let's have one chromosome right here another chromosome right here now remember these would be uh, homologous pairs lining up and going through this crossover event this gene is dominant or this both of these are dominant these ones are recessive so if there's a crossover event that occurs here, you would just, let's say there's a single crossover. So, you know, the break point is right in here. And you exchange that top of that arm with the top of that arm, that double crossover, that would yield. So you'd have recessive form over here and dominant form there. The other chromosome would then have the dominant form. Boom. So there, that would be the result of a single crossover. Now let's say that single crossover happened, but now you had a separate crossover event. So let's draw these new chromosomes out now. We'll keep it in red. Now, if we had a crossover event occur between these, let's say this crossover <coughs> occurred in the middle again, right here. And you, this can happen. You can have two crossovers that happen. You can have around the max is usually like three crossing over events. But now let's say, you know, these two arms exchange down here. It's a lot of distance, but let's just hypothetically not change the same arms again. Now that new chromosome is gonna be back to the same order. So if these two switch in, they'll be flipped around, but the genes will be the same. So you'll have the dominance back together and the recessives back together. So you would have crossing over happening here. You would have a non-recombinant forming and then, but it would become, you would have a recombinant forming, but then it would return back to a non-recombinant. So if that happened, it would reduce this percentage, well, or increase this percentage because the, it wouldn't be exact. So this double crossing over can underestimate that true difference. That's why, Genetic mapping is a rough idea of the distance between each. We'll come back to these double crossovers again in the next lecture. And you'll see me write double crossovers as DXO double crossover and single crossover as SXO. Just some abbreviations I used uh, just to keep you in line. So the take home message from this is the greater the distance, the higher the recombination frequency and the higher the likelihood of double crossing over which again would form those non-recombinant progeny. So the, it makes sense to let's say, you know, 
you know, we erase B up here and B was down here. There would be a, a much higher event for having two crossing over events occurring between those two areas. So the further apart they are, the higher the likelihood. Now let's finish this video with a little example, example, not an example, uh, going over kind of what we've covered today. So here I give you the recombination frequencies. All of these were run in pairs. So all these were test crosses and these are the results of the cr test cross. So AB 0.38, AC 0.5, AD 0.07, DC 0.5, BD 0.33, CD 0.5. So now where do we start? You can go to the highest number or the lowest number first. Here we see A to C is 0.5, B to C is 0.5, C to D is 0.5. So what's the common feature here is C. So A, B, and D are all 0.5 away from C. And what did we just talk about? That means, so if it's 50%, could be on the same chromosome or very far apart or two different chromosomes. So different linkage groups. So let's just draw C up here on its own chromosome because let's just say C is on a different linkage group. Now let's look at A, B, and D. So A to B is 0.38. Okay. A to D is 0.07. That's our shortest distance. So likelihood of A next to D. And then B to D is 0.33. So let's draw out our chromosome. A to D is 0.07 or seven map units. So we can figure that one out. Now A to B is 0.38. B to D is 0.33. So A to B is a longer distance than B to D. So B to D is 0.33. So we know it's not going to be exactly to scale, but oh, B, thought I wrote a B there for a second. A to B is then, well, B to D, I mean, B to D here is 33 map units. Now A to B, what should that be? So A to B here, 33 plus seven should be 40, but our result of A to B is actually 38 map units. So why is this not 40? Well, what did we just talk about? So the further apart these are, so the greater the distance, the higher the recombination frequency. So 0.38 is a pretty high recombination frequency the higher likelihood of double crossovers to form non-recombinant progeny. So that's what happened here. So we had a few double crossover events that lowered this number. So it should have been around 40, but because of double crossovers, it made it more like 38 according to the data. So again, further apart, it gets a little messier. Uh, but yeah, that kind of sums up what I wanted to go over today. So next video, we start getting into the double crossover. So it starts getting a little bit more complex. I mean, triple, yeah, triple three-point test cross. Sorry, my words are escaping me today. Uh, but yes, today was a little history introduction and then, you know, a little introduction to genetic mapping. But next video is the fun one for the three-point test cross. And then the last video, we'll be going over physical mapping. All right. That's all I have for today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.